Monday, 26th of August, here in the UK, it's a bank holiday. Um, I was up early, I decided that one, I must have a good shower, and two, I must have a good shave. So we're going to be trying yesterday's honing efforts. I have three razors here, all of which uh, were only honed yesterday and only stropped this morning. This one is rather pleasing. This is the uh, the French by Leon Pelleret of Paris. It's the officier. And this one had a, a warp, quite a severe warp in it, uh, which I have taken out and I've got the hone marks to prove it. Yes, I'm afraid this one has had a little bit of a hard honing. However, this one is on the Welsh slate, the beautiful purple Welsh Melwyddyn Welsh slate, which I can't pronounce because it's got three sets of double L's in it and I don't know how to pronounce it. So anyway, that's the rather beautiful, this is a quarter hollow. It's going to be an interesting shave. The other two, which I did yesterday, I'll just briefly show you because I'm going to shave with them. I shave with everything. Right, that is a restored um, cor uh, tolly. What am I talking about? This is the restored uh, tory from America. This one had quite a severe nick out of the blade and some corrosion, but look at it now. So now, and it HHT'd very nicely, although I am putting more work into stropping than ever before for a simple reason. I think the quality of the hairs that I use for the hanging hair test are degrading. I need to get a, a better quality of hair. Anyway, I won't ramble on. That's the Tory. That's very nice. Worcester, Massachusetts. And this one is a very beautiful celluloid scaled little German razor, which I, again is a rescue case, but it's come up so well. It had a, a lot of bad homeware, which I've ground out and removed and repolished. Um, this one, I didn't think it quite hanging hair tested as well as the Tory. But anyway, we'll give this one a go as well. Right, so today, more importantly, I've done another experiment. Yes, I love my experiments. This is the third and untested wonderful soap from the Cajun Blade. This is Eric's, um, he's going, this is the one he's going to go with, to use his expression. This is the Bayou Malay, the Mallet, whichever way you want to pronounce it. And this one is um, a mostly tallow based. Uh, I'm not sure, but I don't detect any unusual piney aromas and I don't detect any sandalwood. It's very mild. In fact, to smell it properly, it's best to undo the lid after it's stood overnight. Yeah, that's extremely mild. So what I did was, just allow me to put a little pre-shave on. A la Jacques, it said he should get She hit his big. Anyway, allow me just to very quickly slap a little bit of this uh, one as a pre-shave. And it's very mild aroma. I, I'm not very good on soaps and aromas. I'm about as good on soaps and aromas as I am on camel hair, dog's bristle, hog's bristle, badger's bum, whatever. I'm not a great expert on everything by any means, especially brushes, but I do know what I like. And what I did today was a very good friend, Mark, who sent this original Old Spice shaving mug. How about that? I've actually put a little bit into there of uh, Eric's wonderful soap. And I've driven up a, a lather. First time in ages. I don't normally bother bowl lathering. I usually go straight from the tub. However, there must be a good reason for why people do it. And I'm certain I found out you do get an enormously creamy lather. Look at this. Now that's cream. Wow. So here's Martin giving himself his first luxury lather. And believe me, 
The Cajun Blaze Eric's soaps are magnificent. That is probably the best test of a lather I've done. That is really very, very, very good. We're talking about cushion. We're talking about slickness. I like slickness. If it's not slick, I ain't happy with it. Anyway, so that's going to do for at least, I could probably get about three shaves out of that, but I won't. Um, as usual, I've made a mess and got lather on my fingers. So, chaps, always a good idea. Clean off the lather. Otherwise, you're looking at accident and emergency. So, let's try these razors and see how they work. I'm very excited by the French because this is a very unusual razor, in my opinion. I love the typically French, beautiful style. I'm pretty certain that this is uh, an early plastic. Might be a baker line, I don't know. Anyway, the gentleman that made it, Leon Pelleret, Paris, with a number three. I'm not certain what the three would stand for. Anyway, this one's a quarter hollow. And this one is on the Welsh purple stone, which is, of course, a slate. It's quite a stiff blade. You notice it straight away. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But it's certainly cutting through the stubble. Difference is the degree of comfort. Oh, we're on a countdown from the moustache, by the way, chaps. It isn't going to stay forever. I'm beginning to scare small children in the street. Yeah, that's good. It's good, but not great. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I put it very close to being on the same level as some of my other quarter hollows, uh, but without a quarter hollow directly in front of me, it's difficult to say. Yeah, um, definitely okay. Whether it's gonna be great, I'm not sure. Right, let's try this little German fellow. This is the Amore, or Amor. And I've got to say, it's probably got the prettiest scales. I mean, look at that for celluloid. What a pretty little razor. I need, needed a fair bit of work. It was horribly disfigured by the barber who'd been using it, who obviously hones it one-handed and leads and leans towards the toe all the time. So you get bad wear. Anyway, I've corrected it. Let's see how that feels. Ooh. A little bit more give. Because this is still a hollow ground. Yeah, it's better. Better than the quarter hollow, even on stiff stubble. Yeah, that's quite impressive, actually. Nice little blade, this. This is just a first pass, but it's, it's an indicator. Right, let's uh, scrape more lather off. Don't try and uh, wash your blade free of lather in the sink. It's going to end in a disaster at some point. Right, and last but not least, this is the little Tori. Now this one was a real basket case. It had a severe, very severe nick in the blade. But I love American steel, it's just good. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. Well, that's the first pass done with three razors. These little razors take a little bit more 
judgment, shall we say, because you haven't got the broad width of a blade. So you do have to be maybe a tad more careful, I don't know. But the more straight shaving you do, the more your abilities grow. If you start it when you're young and vibrant, like Sean, you master it so quickly. I mean, he's a master now. So Sean's gone from being, uh, relatively speaking, a novice to a master shaver in a very short space of time. Yeah, I'll give this a pass as well. Right, let's quickly lather up. I don't want to waste your time, champs. And I can't say this is this bowl lathering seems to give a very, very nice lather, but sometimes you just don't have the time. Look at that. No aroma, I'm sorry, I nose is bad, I don't know. It's just slightly floral. Whereas the uh, the others were lovely, really quite strong. My favourite at the moment is that Flowers of the Pines, the Pine Forest. That was a absolutely superb, really lovely, lovely, lovely shade. Anyway, let's go and do a uh, an against the grain path with a froggy. Size wise, very nearly six eighth. Oh, that's smooth. Yeah. That's quite nice actually. Easy to make the mistake of thinking the first pass is indicative of a good age. Not always. Yeah, that's a nice, nice piece of steel. Well done, Monsieur Pelleret. Yeah, it's good. Is it great? Mm. No, it's not great, it's good. For great, you need a, an established brand, a reliable name. Philharmonica. Anyway, I'd still say against the grain, nice, not bad at all. Now, here we go back to the little German fellow. Such a such a pretty little razor. I, I do love pretty. Anyway, let's try this against the grain. Isn't the noise difference? That's a hollow grind for you. Only a small hollow grind, but it's nice. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, that does feel very, very nice. I'm gonna go across the grain. I can hear every bristle being cut. Short strokes or long strokes. Nice. <laughs> Particularly when you can hear every bristle being cut. Yeah, that's a very nice little razor. I'm so pleased because it's quite a lot of work to restore a razor. But this is good for another 100, 200 years, as long as someone doesn't leave it in the wet. Is this one had a little corrosion, but mostly it had terrible home wear. I can't understand who someone is going to do that on a stone and just wear the living crap out the nose. Very odd, very odd. Japanese do it a lot. All the Japanese uh, razors I've seen have got an enormous amount of home wear on the uh, on the nerves of the razor. Anyway. 
Last but not least, a little tiny bit more lava. And this one is the Torrey. Now, this really was a save me job. This was, uh, when I got it through the post, it still had red rust all over it. <laughs> and it had a lovely chip in the center of the blade and several small chips on the nose. Or as Bob would say, the toe. Nose, toe, whatever. The leading part of the blade. Anyway. This is a large brush. This is, for those interested in brushes, as you know, this is my big 30 millimeter yaki. This would shave another six people without putting any more soap on. However, it's me on my own. Right, little Tori that had been quite severely uh, rusted, quite severely damaged, but is now back to being a good little razor, I hope. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a little beauty. That's doing quite well. I mean, I wouldn't pick it as my everyday razor, but then I haven't got an everyday razor. Edge, haha, here comes the interesting bit. Now the frog, which in all fairness being quarter hollow is more difficult to make a judgment on. The frog was on the Welsh Melodin. This is on my big antique Tamashanta. And it's good. It was a bevel set very harshly. It had to be on a 1K stone for quite a long time. Once the bevel set, you can go 1K, 3K in my case, 5K, 8K, and this is the Tamashanta. And I'm very impressed the Tamashanta. It's not only a good smooth stone to work with, it's got the prettiest pattern on it. Lots of little tiny, I don't know what you call them, you have to talk to Eric. Lots of beautiful little speckles, one of the most attractive things I've seen. Beautiful, beautiful stone. Yeah, this, this is nice. So the Tamashanta was on this one, which is the little much worn Tori. And it was also on the little German Amor. So this one can go out to someone that wants to experiment. I don't sell razors, I give razors. Or I, I trade razors. This is nice. As I said, this is a bit of a revelation to me. I haven't been able to afford or won't afford much in the way of American steel for the simple reason the extortionate price on the postage. This is like a, I don't know what it was, I think this is worked out at about $17 to actually purchase it, and it cost me £30 in total to get it over here, which is obviously about, I don't know, what, $50. So, um, yeah eBay postage is ferocious, absolutely unfair, and quite honestly, you've got to be out of your mind to buy stuff from America. But there are exceptions. I'm going to now show you why there are exceptions. <laughs> the reason there are exceptions, if you're careful, this went cheap because the blade was ruined. And very few people will be very interested in picking it up. This shows the quality, by the by, of Eric's soap. I'm quite happily shaving on bare skin because it's kind. Yeah. Perfect shave. Anyway, let me show you why this was a good buy. it came with a Tory 
neat case. So the blade was a wreck, the razor was a wreck, but look at that, isn't that beautiful? This, I've got a couple of them now. This is the J.R. Torrey Razor Company, US, Worcester, Massachusetts. I've got to say, it's one of the prettiest cases. I love cases. I'm weird, I know. I love razors, I love cases. I'm not much expert on the others. However, enough of this, chaps. Call that a day. 20 minutes? Yep, yeah, 20 minutes. That's three razors proven. Three razors saved. I should give it a very quick wipe off. I have discovered that trimming moustaches is quite fun. I've lost the Fu Manchu edges on the moustache and I've put a little cleft, very small cleft in the centre, which looks rather dashing, rather cavalryman style. Anyway, if the beloved in Morocco uh, decides that she doesn't like it, it's going and it will go in two seconds flat. Now, the last little test, Allen block, because I've used three different brand new edges. And as I suspected, very, very, very slight, st I can't call that a sting. So that was successful. To be able to shave with three freshly honed, freshly stropped blades and get the hardly any sting. I think this might be down to the quality of the soap. So I said before, a handmade custom soap is going to beat any commercial soap. And also, um, it hasn't got lots of horrible false chemicals in it. So these are very pure from Eric's wonderful laboratory deep in the bayous of Louisiana. I think he stirs his brew with uh, snapping turtles or alligators, but whatever. Works very well. Anyway, chaps, that's it. So, that's the little sign of the highest quality soap I know. Three razors done. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And I'm just trying to spread the word. So it's Martin's Test Shaves, over and out chaps. Have a wonderful holiday Monday.